In this video, I wanna talk about how to easily play 2D sounds inside of our scene and how we can build a reusable script that will allow us to just play 2D sounds whenever we need them with very little overhead. So first I wanna talk about why we even need this. If you've messed with Unity's audio system before, you know that there's two handy functions. One is called play clip at point, and you can call this from anywhere. You can say, audio source dot play clip at point you can give it a clip and you can give it a location and it will play. It will also destroy itself and it's super easy, super handy. The problem is this will only play a 3D clip at point. But what if I wanna play an audio clip 2D so that I can hear it no matter where we are? Because if I play the audio clip from this cube and my camera's all the way back here, it's gonna sound really faint. So what I wanna do is play an audio clip 2D that I can hear no matter where I, where I am, but I also want this to be really easy to call, just like play clip at, at point. There's another function called play one shot, which is pretty useful. And if we have reference to an audio source, we can actually just play it from the audio source. The problem is, if this audio source, like if we had one attached to this cube, if this audio source plays, but let's say we destroy the cube, then the audio will stop playing as well. So really, I wanna create something that's the best of both of these worlds. I want to spawn a 2D audio inside of the scene, and I wanna be able to hear it no matter where I am, very similar to the play clip at point 3D. So to do this, we are first going to set up a little test case. So let's build a level controller. And I'll tell you in advance, I have a few little assets here that will help me, um, help me test this. So for example, I have a coin sound and I'm gonna use this for testing our audio. First, I'm gonna create a level controller script. Call it level controller. We're just using this for testing and we're gonna put this on a generic level object. And inside of the script, I'm just gonna get a reference to my audio clip, coin sound. I like to set a default to null just so that I don't get any weird editor warnings. Now we're just gonna test this on a button press, but really you could have this be from anything. It could be on collision, it could be uh, on fire the weapon, it doesn't really matter. But for testing, I'm gonna put this on a Q key. And now we wanna play the audio here. So in order to do that, I wanna do something very similar to audio source dot play clip at point, right? This is something that we looked at before. The problem is, again, this is playing a 3D clip and we wanna play a 2D. So we're gonna to have to build our own function that does this. And ideally we wanna make it so that we can call it from anywhere, very similar to this play clip at point, which if you look it up in the um, documentation is a static function right here, static void play clip at point. We, we wanna do the same thing, but we wanna do it with 2D. So I'm gonna comment this out. And the easiest way to create this is to make a separate static script that will create a 2D sound and put it into the scene and auto destruct. So let's make a new C Sharp script called, we'll just call it audio helper. And if you've never messed with static functions before, um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It just means that we cannot have any instance of our class inside of the script, which another way to think about that is we can't have any, you know, variables at the top, like a, a audio clip, clip or whatever. You know, we can't have this at the top and then reference it. Everything has to be self-contained within this function that we're writing. So we're gonna just compartmentalize everything in this function. So let's create a static function, audio source, and we'll call this play clip 2D. And now we need to think about what we want in order to get this function to work. Because remember, if this is static, everything that the function needs to run needs to be, and we need to pass into the function. One thing we know we need is an audio clip, right? We want to know the audio to play. And we may also want control over the volume, very similar to the play clip at point. But since it's 2D, we don't really need a position. So this play clip at point that we're emulating, we don't really need a position here. So we'll just ignore it because 2D sound does not need a position. 
So now let's think about what we need to do. First thing, we'll just rough this out first. We need to create our new audio source, okay? And then once we create it, we just wanna configure it to be 2D. And then we want to destroy it when it's done. And then lastly, return it. I didn't talk about this before. You could actually make this void, but one of the downsides of the play clip at, at point is that it's a fire and forget. We're spawning a thing in the scene, but we can't really get reference to it if we wanna you know, change the pitch or change the range or whatever. If I do this as an audio source, then I can actually return the thing that we spawned, you know, our audio clip that we spawned in the scene, and then further modify it if I want to. Returning it just gives me the option to do more things to that audio source when I call it, but I don't really have to if I don't want to. But we'll put that in there just to leave the option open. So we'll do create our new audio source. First thing we need to do is create a new game object in our scene. And we'll just call this audio object. And to create a new game object, just create it, and then we need to give it a name. Uh, this is the name that it will have whenever it pops up in the scene. So we'll call this 2D Audio. So whenever we do this, it'll, it'll spawn the 2D Audio game object inside the scene. But remember, it's just like doing this, like create empty, and then we're giving it a name, so it would be like 2D Audio. Um, so this is all we're doing so far. But once we do that, we still need an audio component because we wanna configure um, an audio source as well. So we made our game object, but now we need to attach an audio source. And because I'm gonna to wanna to do things with this later, I'm going to store it inside of a new audio source. We'll take our audio object, we'll add a component to it of type audio source. This is the equivalent of our new create object and then adding, you know, giving it the name and then adding an audio source like this. We're just, we just did all of this through code just now. So that's what we've done so far. So now we need to configure our audio source. One thing you may not know is if you create an audio source by default, it is 2D. So we don't really need to set it to be 2D. So when we add an audio source to a new, a new object, you see how all, this is what we're, we're getting by default. And you'll see that it defaults to 2D already. So we actually don't need to do anything there, but we do need to put a new audio clip into this and we need to tell it to play. And we may wanna adjust the volume too. So inside of here, we will say, so this is our audio component, our audio source here that we created a new reference to when we're storing it so that we can access it down here right after we create it. Audio source, so we're passing in our clip and our volume. So we need to configure our new audio source with those things. So we'll say audio source dot clip is equal to our clip that we're passing in. And we need to do the same thing with our volume in case they want to change it when they spawn it. All right, now we actually need to play the audio. So, so we'll leave a space here and we'll tell it to audio source.play. By default, it's set to play on awake and we're creating this, so it'll probably play automatically, but it's nice to uh, just specify when you're playing the audio just in case. And then lastly, I want it to destroy itself when it's done. And if we can get the length of the clip, which we do have access to, then we know exactly how long to keep it alive before we destroy it. So all we need to do here is say, um, normally we would call our destroy function and we could destroy a game object over time. Just know that because we're doing the static, we, we need to call it from object right here. So if you type object.destroy, and then inside of here, first we need to figure out what object to destroy. And remember, this is, this is the game object. The audio object is the generic whole game object we want to destroy. Uh, we don't want to destroy the audio source and keep the game object alive, right? So make sure that you do this one. So that's the thing we, know we want to destroy. And then we want to tell it how long should it be alive before it destroys. Well, the length of the clip is how long we want it to be alive. And then lastly, we just wanna return our 
audio source object right here. In case the thing that calls this static function wants to also make other changes, right? Like we're returning this thing right here. So if they want to adjust the pitch, they could, for example. So I'm just gonna return that. Hmm. And the last optional thing we're gonna do, just to enforce that everything inside of Audio Helper, we wanna make sure that if we add other functions to this, that we make sure that uh, we don't want to keep instances here. I'm gonna make this a static class. And all this is doing is saying that um, this cannot be attached to anything for one because it cannot have an instance. So I wanna delete mono behavior right there. I don't want it to inherit from anything. This does not even need to exist inside of the scene. It can just be a script inside of your folder, which is pretty cool. So I don't need to attach this to anything and I can call it from anywhere. I can call the function from anywhere because it's static, but now I, I'm just specifying that everything else that goes into this class, I want, to, I want it to be static as well. So I'm gonna make that static class there and then we should be good. All we need to do is call it here and just show you what that looks like. So let's do this. We need the name of our class. So we call this audio helper dot, and you'll see our function that we wrote here pop up, play clip 2D. We put the open parentheses and it tells us what we need to give it. We need a clip, which is gonna be the coin sound, which we declared at the top right here, and a volume, we'll just put that at one. So now, as long as we give something in our scene, an audio clip, we can call this function to spawn an audio 2D inside of our scene, play it with the audio clip, and then automatically destroy it. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna delete this game object. So again, our, our audio helper does not exist in our scene, and we can call this function from, in, from anywhere. Make sure that you give our level controller a little coin to play. You know, if, if this was on a exploding object or a collect or whatever, as long as you give it an audio clip, you can play that. Hit play and test it. You see, you can spam the button now and it'll just create new objects inside of your scene, which is pretty cool. And I also wanna show you if we wanted to do something else to it. So for example, let's say we wanna add some randomization to, we'll test this from key code, we'll test this from W. And let's see how we can hold on to the audio source and make further changes if we wanted to. So I'm gonna say audio source, I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna create a new reference. Audio source is equal to, and we'll call our same helper function. Click clip 2D, give it a sound. And now, because we have access to this, we can do more things to that new audio source responding if we want to. So for example, maybe we can set the pitch and maybe I choose a random number for the pitch between a range. So we'll do, um, Unity engine dot random dot range. You actually don't have to do Unity engine dot, but sometimes if you're using system, for example, and you just type random dot range, it may get confused if you want to use the Unity random dot range or the system one. So I just like to specify right here. Random dot range will give it a low, so let's say 0.5 pitch between 0.5 and 1, and we need to come convert that to float because this is decimal. So now that what this is doing is this is getting a random value between 0.5 and one, which the pitch defaults to one, that's normal. But if we if it goes to 0.5, it'll be lower in pitch. So now we're getting a, a random variation between 0.5 and one and assigning that to the new audio source. This is just to show you that you can mess with other uh, attributes inside of the audio source if you want right, because we're returning it. That's the whole reason that we're returning it right here. Um, just to leave it open for further control if you want, which the original play clip at point, you'll remember, it's void. So if we wanted to do other things to that clip that spawns in the scene, we can't. So the nice thing about returning it here is that we have more control. So I'm gonna save this. Hit play. And you'll see if we press W, we're getting 
that further variation because of our randomization, but you could do other things too. You could um, adjust other things on the audio source, but this is to show you how you could do that. It'd be these two lines of code right here. So now you can actually use this audio helper play clip 2D function anywhere you want. And this is nice because I, it's kind of a bummer that Unity doesn't give you a default function to do this really easily. It's, it's very difficult, for example, if you want to play a sound when you collect a thing, but you want to disable that thing when you collect it, you need the sound to exist somewhere in the scene so it doesn't get destroyed with this object. So this is one nice way of doing that. I would mention to be, wa be wary of doing this if you, if you care about optimization and you're spawning a ton of these. It's generally fine to do this, but if you cared about optimization for mobile, for example, you may wanna set up an object pooling. So, you know, maybe I'll say something like to do uh, integrate with object pool, right? This would be the better way to put that system together, which you can find other tutorials to do this. But if you just wanted a really quick and dirty, easy way to play 2D sounds in your scene, we created one here that will just create the sound in the, in the scene, um, give you access to it, and then destroy it when it's done, which is a customized version of their play clip at point, and I think uh, a lot more useful than the 3D version.